Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2018 Nissan Pathfinder. So this is what our trailer hitch is going to look like on our vehicle here. Now this actually has a hidden design, meaning the cross tube is going to be tucked up back behind the bumper here. So this is going to make for the best overall appearance as well as giving us the best ground clearance possible. Now our trailer hitch here does have a black powder coated finish. It's also a matte finish. So this protects the hitch from rust and corrosion over time. Being that it is on the underside of the vehicle, the trailer hitch also does get abused. You're banging your metal, metal ball mounts and everything else in there. So it's good to have that nice, strong powder coated finish. And the matte texture also blends in really well with the underbody paneling. So adding a trailer hitch to your Pathfinder, it's gonna be an excellent option because it's gonna make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now we can obviously use a trailer hitch for towing, but let's say we needed to free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips, or we wanted to hit some trails, we could easily attach either a hitch mounted bike rack or hitch mounted cargo carrier. So in regards to towing, our trailer hitch here is gonna provide us with a 6,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward on the receiver tube. It also has a 900 pound tongue weight rating, which is gonna be the downward force on the receiver tube. Now, keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, we do need to verify the vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components, whether that's the hitch or the vehicle. So this trailer hitch does provide us with a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening, which is gonna be an industry standard size. And this larger opening here is gonna allow for a much wider variety of accessories to choose from, such as bike racks, cargo carriers, and ball mounts. There's definitely a lot more of those options for the larger two inch than there is for the smaller one and a quarter. So no matter what accessories you have, they're gonna be compatible here with this hitch. So if we take a closer look at the side of the receiver tube, we're gonna have our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin hole that's gonna accept our 5 8 inch diameter hitch pin and clip. Keep in mind, this doesn't actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your accessories are actually gonna come with their own specific ones. So not really a big deal. In most cases, you won't need to purchase one separately. And then welded to the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those are gonna work great with both the S style as well as the larger clevis style hooks. So now a couple measurements for you guys here. They're gonna help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. The first one is the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening. That's gonna be right at 13 inches. And that'll be helpful when you're selecting the correct ball mount. That way you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then finally, the distance from the outside edge of the bumper to the center of the hitch pin hole. You're looking at about three and a half inches there. So you'll need to keep that in mind when you're selecting your folding accessories. That way you can make sure that while they're in the stowed position, they don't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one is pretty simple here. It's a completely bolt-on hitch. There's no drilling into the vehicle whatsoever. Now, you may or may not struggle threading your bolts into the frame here. It's kind of hit and miss on these Nissan here. Some of the weld nuts actually rust up a little bit over time, so you can't thread your bolt in cleanly. You may need to take some extra steps to clean those out, but we'll walk you through all that later in the video here. I would give yourselves around one to two hours depending on your experience level. The only tool you're probably not gonna have is gonna be a torque wrench, but you can actually rent those for free in most local auto parts stores. So the first step of our installation, we need to open up the hatch on our vehicle. We're gonna lift open this floor covering here. And if we look inside, deep down in there on the passenger side, you're gonna have this little plug. Simply rotate that to remove it. And here we're gonna have a nut. This is gonna operate the spare tire winch because we do need to lower the spare tire and remove it from the vehicle just temporarily. So we're gonna take a 21 millimeter socket and begin loosening that. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come underneath the driver's side frame rail and you should be able to see this tow hook here. So we need to remove this. There's actually four bolts. There's gonna be two on the bottom and then two on the outside. So what I'm gonna do to help us out is I'm just gonna spray down each of these four bolts with a penetrating oil. That's gonna help them remove much easier. And this isn't required again, but if you have some, it will help make things a little bit easier. So we'll come back with an 18 millimeter socket and remove each of our four bolts. I'm gonna start with the two ones on the outside here.
And then once we remove this last one, the tow hook should drop down and out. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come underneath the vehicle here. So on either side here, we're gonna have these bumper fascia support tabs. So that's this metal bracket here, attaches to the top of the bumper beam and then the bottom of the bumper fascia. So we need to go ahead and remove both of these. In order to do that, we're gonna take a flat blade screwdriver and we're gonna remove this push fastener here at the bottom. So we're just gonna pry out the center section. So this one's actually stuck pretty good. There's probably a lot of dirt and debris in there. So it's gonna do as best as I can to work that free. So normally the center section here would pull out and then the rest of it would pull out. This one just sort of all came out as one, which is fine. But once we get that bottom attachment free, we're gonna remove that bolt at the top there using a 12 millimeter socket. There we go, we got this one out and now again we have one on the other side in the same location. So the next thing we need to do is we do need to make a small cut in the bottom of the bumper fascia to allow clearance of our receiver tube. So you can see we've got it marked out here. This is super easy. What we did is we just measured to find the center point so you're just gonna take two reference points on the outside of the bumper. I just actually hooked our tape measure here. And there's that same point on the other side here. I use that to find the center line point. And then I just measured out one and three quarter inches on either side so we could get two and a quarter inch. And then I measured up, I believe it's one and three eighths. So this little section here is what we're gonna be trimming. And you have a couple different options to trim this. Um, if you have some heavy duty shears, that'll probably work. Or if you have a razor knife, you could score that enough to break it off. But best case scenario would be to use a Dremel tool, which is what we have here. So we'll go ahead and remove that material now. So now that we've got that removed, I'm gonna come back with a file or a razor knife works really well just to clean up all those rough edges. So we're just about ready to lift our hitch into position, but before we do that, we wanna go ahead and make sure that all the weld nuts underneath the vehicle on the frame are free and clear. We can easily thread our bolts in. So it's gonna be the same three holes on either side. It's gonna be here, here, and here. So I'm just gonna take one of the bolts that comes in your kit here. I'm just gonna try to thread it into that hole there. There's quite a bit of dirt and debris in there, so it's not wanting to thread in cleanly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with our spray lubricant. I'm gonna spray it out nice and good. Then I'm gonna take a wire brush here and just clean out those holes as best as we can. I'm gonna do this with each of our six mounting holes here, cleaning it out nice and good. We're just gonna keep doing this until we can freely thread in our bolt. So we've got all of our weld nuts clean out, cleaned out, and I'll be honest with you guys, this was a bit of a chore. Um, for our particular vehicle here, these were pretty rusted. You can get a thread tap. It's gonna be a metric 12 by one and a quarter. So you can use a thread tap to clean those out. You need to be very careful when you're doing that though, because it is pretty easy to cross thread them. But again, really, this may or may not be an issue for you guys, but if you do run into that, you will need to take some extra measures. But if we take our original hardware now, you can see it threads in there much more easily. So now we're gonna take our trailer hitch here with an extra set of hands and go ahead and lift it into position on the vehicle. And then we can secure it with our provided hardware. So I've got one bolt holding the hitch in on each side. Now on the driver's or on the passenger side here, I'm not sure why they didn't have us lower the exhaust because it's pretty much impossible to reach any of the bolts over there with the muffler in the way. So although you can probably do it with the muffler still in place, it's actually pretty easy just to drop this down to give us a lot more room to work. It's gonna make things a ton easier on us. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take some sort of support device so we can support the exhaust. Because we have two hangers I'm gonna break free. There's gonna be one at the rear here And then we're gonna have one here in the center. If you have a pry tool, you can use one of those as well. 
We'll get that off. Our exhaust is going to drop down. And now we have much more space to thread our bolts in there and torque them down. So now that I have each of our six bolts in place, I'm going to come back with a 19 millimeter socket and snug them all up. So now that we have all of our hardware torqued for our hitch, don't forget to reinstall your spare tire along with the bumper support tabs. And then if you lowered your exhaust, make sure you raise that back into position as well. But once that's done, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the e-trailer trailer hitch receiver here on our 2018 Nissan Pathfinder.